welcome back. I'm Mary Jo, also known as Sojo, and this is my channel where I talk about all my quilty stitchy things. And today is January 21st, 2024, and this is my weekly update number 49. And this is where I talk about everything I worked on, completed, and done throughout the week. Now, today, <laughs> it's 24 degrees outside. So it's a little bit better than those negative temperatures last week. Now, we did get some snow, finally, but it was only about two inches, so it wasn't very much. It was just enough to cancel school, but now we're on to that warming trend, which that's good. I don't like those negative temperatures. Now today also marks a little special day. Anybody know what it is? Let me know in the comments below. Well, today is my one year anniversary of being on YouTube. One year ago today, I decided to make a video and post it to YouTube and see what happens. And here we are. And before I started this video, I looked and I have 774 subscribers. Well, <laughs> I mean, I didn't know what to expect when I started. I didn't know if anybody would even watch me. So now I have 774 friends. But with that being said, I would appreciate it if everybody would go check their subscribers and make sure they're still subscribing. I know YouTube kind of unsubscribes people, and it's happened to me from a few of my people that I watch all the time. So if you wouldn't mind, just go check and make sure you're still subscribed. I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Now, with a year, I've learned a lot. Still got a lot more to learn. It's been an interesting journey. I mean, I started this with just the hopes of helping to meet and interact with a lot of people that sh have the same interests and hobbies that I do. And I've certainly done that. I mean, I've owned, I'm have i much more of an introvert. I live in a very rural community where I'm kind of here by myself and just do my own thing. So I thought I'd put it on YouTube and meet some people, and I've definitely done that. Before I started this channel I was not much of a commenter whether it be on live streams or videos and that's definitely pulled me out of my shell and interacted with everybody and I love hearing from my subscribers with the comments they put especially the funny ones <laughs> it's been quite a journey I've also learned a lot that you know by putting myself out there sometimes you're subject to those negative comments it's only been a few but there has been some negative comments right after I started my journey I got a pretty, pretty bad one. <laughs> it was paragraphs and paragraphs long, so I almost stopped. But I put my big girl panties on and I kept going. And here I am, and I don't plan on stopping. So who knows what the next year will bring. So I want to thank everybody that has subscribed, listened, commented, watched my videos. Thank you. It means everything to me. And as a bonus, I think my mom really wa enjoys watching my videos too because she sees everything I work with. Now, I do go to my parents once or twice a week. Well, that's where the long arm is, so I do quilt something over there and quilt something. But with me making these videos, my mom gets to see everything that I worked on, which before she didn't. So I think she really likes that. So as a bonus, made my mom happy. <laughs> so with all that being said, let's take a look at what I worked on. So this is what I quilted on the long arm this week. Now, I didn't only quilt one. I think a minute ago I said I quilted two. I did only quilt one. I put the binding on two, but I only quilted one. So this is my December Cotton Cuts Gnomes, and I quilted it with this Christmas tree um, pantograph. I think it was called Tenenbaum, but we'll take a look at it. So there is a look at the top, and we'll go all the way down. And then I'll point out the Christmas trees here. Christmas trees with the stars on the tops. There's the star Christmas tree. <laughs> now I know when I hang up these quilts, sometimes it looks like they're wavy, but that's just because there's a thermostat <laughs> behind that quilt that kind of brings out from the wall. We'll take a look at the back. 
And there's the backing and my label. Because not only did I get it quilted this week, I also got the binding on. So that is the last of my Cotton Cuts gnomes. I finished them. So hopefully sometime this week I can do a trunk show of all 12 months. So now that my cotton cuts are done, what am I going to do? Well, I hope to get back to What Will I Make series, where I take my loved pre-cuts and make something out of them. So my question for you is, what kind of pre-cut do you want to see make a quilt out of? A layer cake, jelly roll, charm pack, jolly bar? Let me know in the comments below and we'll see what I can come up with. Now, what else did I do this week? Like I said, I got the binding on that too, but I got the binding on another quilt. Now, you've seen this quilt before, and it's a big one. Let's hang it up and take a look at it. So, this is the second one I put the binding on this week. Now, let's go back for a minute. As I've said before, I had a goal to quilt 50 quilts this week, so not this week, this year in 2024. So, so far I am up to four quilts I have quilted. Now this, I put the binding on and this is a quilt I've previously showed after I quilted it and on my trunk shows and different things. But we'll go in and take a look at that binding and the label and it's all done. And this was the Diamonds Jubilee Bargello. Now Bargellos are some of my favorite quilts to do. I just love them. And this is done in all boutique, all batiks, and it's quite a big quilt. Um, the measurements on here says 107 by 123. We're just going to say it's somewhere around there because I didn't actually measure it, but it's big. <laughs> now I'm trying to find the best way to show all this. I don't know that I'm going to find a better way. <laughs> but there it is, and all the purples and grays. We'll come over here, take a look at it, and like I said, it is a big quilt. With all the diamonds coming out of it. And let me find the label. And... There is my label. Now I did quilt this with the whipsy or whimsy quilt pattern. You can kind of see a little bit in there. And there was a little back, a little of the backing. So this was Batiks and a Pajarlo quilt. Two of my favorite things about quilting. So, my totals for the year so far are I've quilted four quilts, I've completed four quilt tops, and I've put the binding on two. Now, what else did I work on? Well, of course, I worked on lots of piecing, so let's take a look at that. Let me move some other stuff out of the way. There we go. Things are falling. Now, I worked on this Meet the Makers that I would showed you guys last week. This quilt kit from Riley Blake that is several years old. I put the band on the box to keep it from busting open and now I can't get it off. <laughs> but I guess the band did its job. Now, on the back, it says this quilt is 70 by 70, and I just broke the band, but that's okay. So, I started working on the alternate blocks, and I got all of them cut out. Here's a look at that quilt pattern. So last week I was just kind of managed to get everything organized and trying to figure out what color was what. Well, I did all that and I cutted the first parts out and I've got things pinned together, ready to sew. Now these alternate blocks, now 
they're what I have to make the most of. And then the other blocks, I don't have to make so much of. I'm trying to figure out how many, I know it said here somewhere, how many of those alternate blocks we had to make. 25. So these are the blocks like right here. They have the different colors on them. I know there's five different colors, like there's yellow, a pink, a red, corally pink color, yellow, there's some greens. Of course, they all have the navy and the peacock color going through. So I worked on that. Then I worked on some Creative Notion subscription boxes. Now these are very old. I have since canceled my Creative Notion subscription. So I worked on this butterfly quilt pattern. So I have all of these the first, the middle, and the last row sewn together, and I sewn the sashing on top and bottom of each, and I've had all the butterfly blocks, which are these, sewn together, and now I've got them penned in a row. So, here are the butterfly blocks. The butterfly block rows. Finished making all those, and I have these penned together, just ready to sew, and then, I can add it to the other rows. And here was the other butterfly block row. And here's a look at one of those other blocks. Like I said, the sashing is sewn on the top and the bottom. So I worked on that. another Creative Notions project, and that is this machine cover and ironing board cover. So I use a wool mat, mat when pressing, and I really like my wool mat. However, I was trying to make this because I want another surface area for when I do paper piecing. Now, I do prefer my pressing and cutting station away from where I sit and sew, just because it forces me to get up and move, just to help with the circulation and that sort of thing. But when I paper piece, I do need an ironing station right there that's gonna be more convenient for me to press. So, I am started to make this. I still need the wood piece to put it on. My husband's supposed to be doing it, but I think he forgot. I'll have to motivate him a little bit. <laughs> but. So we worked on that. And here's my pieces where I'm starting to work on that sewing machine. There's the back of it. I've got things pinned together for that cover. And I think this cover is gonna be big enough do put on my Baby Lock Soprano. Now I normally sew with my Baby Lock Accomplish, which is a straight stitch fast machine, is what my everyday sewing, and then I have the Soprano that I use if I need any zigzagging or decorative stitches or anything like that. So again, more pieces penned, ready to go for that sewing machine. Oh, these is already actually sewn together. And this is my start of my piping. And this is the cover for my sewing, my pressing station I'm going to make. Now, when I was doing this, the instructions told me to take the elastic and sew the elastic together. And then put the elastic and fold the casing over it. To me, I think that sounds like a horrible idea. 
just me. I think that would cause a lot of problems and a lot of frustrations. I'm used to making casings through garment sewing and I would never sew the elastic and then pull the casing over it. Just my opinion. So I have made the casing which I will sew down and then insert the elastic. And then when I pull the elastic, sew that. So I am going to do it just a little bit different than what the instruction says. So I've got that and then, well basically, my sewing machine, not my sewing machine, my pressing cover is done. I just need the wood. And then in this subscription box, which is several years old, they also gave us some like insole bright to put on it, which I will put some batting and some insole bright on the wood and then that pressing cover on top. And hopefully it's going to be able to sit on my sewing table. I've got a little, little table that comes out that I can put that on top and I can use it as a pressing station when I'm doing paper piecing. That's my plan anyway. We'll see if it works. So I worked on more. Now, normally I have about 14 different projects that I rotate through. I will do one step and then press it and pin it ready to do the next step and put it away and pull the next one out and that's just how I work I know that doesn't work for everybody and that's okay everybody should do what works for them but for me it keeps it moving I never get bored and it also I know it sounds kind of weird but to me it gives me a fresh eye when I pull a project on I spend the most time cutting and pinning I'm a pinner I pin everything in reality, the sewing part is actually very little, little time because I spend so much time pinning. And by the time I get done pinning, I've spent a lot of time, my eyes kind of get tired or I just get tired of looking at it and mistakes happen. So for me, by putting things away and then when I pull them back out, I look at them with a fresh eye and then I see the mistakes how it usually works for me and that's why I do it like I said that doesn't work for everybody it doesn't mean that's what you should do it just means that's what I do okay so <laughs> so samplers I worked on this quilt pattern the ambience now this was a zen chic colorway so I worked on cutting pressing pinning I've got all of these blocks penned, which they're just like this. Like I said, they're all penned and those strips ready to go to the sew sewing machine and form into that quilt pattern. Let's see here if I can have a better look at the actual pattern, maybe. There we go. There's a better look at it. Just a simple quilt. So I worked on that. I've got all of those blocks here. And I worked on another sew sampler project. And that was this one. And this is the Shooting Star quilt pattern. So. See, I've got everything penned, ready to go for the next step. And when I go through and work on the next step, I will go through and get all of the steps that I can do at one time. I just won't do step one and then step two and step three. I may do step one, step 10, step 17 all at once because I know those are all pieces that I can bind, if that makes sense. But, <clears throat> so I made a bunch of half square triangles and I have them pinned to these other squares. Ready to sew. And the reason I can bind those is just because when I'm at the sewing machine, like I said, the sewing is the least, the least amount of time I spend. I want to get as much sewing done as I can at once. So therefore, there's multiple sewing steps that I combined. Now, I also started doing this stitch and flip method here. Now, I made a mistake on these. I had actually sewed where this print is. There's a white piece that was the same color or the same size 
And then this white piece had a color strip that was the same side of this. So I'd actually started sewing those and I'd sewn all 30 some when I realized it was supposed to be the opposite way. It was supposed to be the white square and the collared strip. So I had to have a little date with Jack and rip them all out and put them in. That's okay. Jack appreciated the extra alone time together. <laughs> and I've also got these penned ready to go, which is just little four patches. With the half square triangles. So I worked on that. And I worked on two other projects. And I worked on this sort of sampler project, Daydreamer Quilt Pattern. So, let's see. I made a bunch of half square triangles and got them penned to another white square. Got a bunch of them going on. I also made a bunch of these stitch and flip units. There's a bunch down through there. All there. And I started, got some four patches pinned together. I know I'm silly with the pens, but yeah, see, see these at the top of my four patches. And that's the bottom. And then I put them like this and I put one pen. So I know that makes my four patch. So next time I go to take that to the Michelle sewing machine, it's ready to sew. And my last project I worked on is this. Now, what's this quilt called? I think it's called, let's see, boxed in. Yeah, boxed in. Now, this was a basically a kit that I had got over at Polar Fabrics in Indiana for a shop hop that I'd went to with my cousin and mom well, about a year ago. And it's a five-yard bundle of fabric that they had, and then you got to pick a free, yard of, a free pattern with it. And this was the pattern I picked. And here's where I am with some of those blocks. As you can see... There, and we're starting to put the little strips all around it. Which, see those white? That's the strips. We got those blocks ready to sew. And then I've got these blocks penned, ready to sew which will be it's right down the center. These middle blocks, it's right down the center where that yellow square is. That's what this dark blue one is. And then there's other strip sets that go on each side. So let me see. There's a better picture of the actual block right there. So this center is what I'm working on. And then I'll have a strip set here that all will cut apart and attach on each side. So, I worked on that. So, those of you who have been with me for a while know what this is. This is my famous ten of pens. And it always has a lot of pens in it because I pin everything. It also keeps some seam represented. But, let me take a look. Let me show you something. <laughs> look. It's empty. I've used all my pens in my pen-in project. Now I do have a couple other thing of pens that I haven't opened yet that I could use if I need. But I just thought this was kind of funny because, you know, I'm known for my pens and loving to pen. 
it's empty. If you've seen my other videos with the amount of pens that's usually in here, it's kind of funny. <laughs> All right, so that's everything I've worked on with sewing and quilting this week. Cross stitch. Well, this is what I'm working on in cross stitch. This 13 part series. Now it's big and I'm doing it on 14 count Ada. So I have done the center. I've done all the white framework around. I've done this, I've done this, and I'm working on this side. So last week I started working on this one. Um, you can't direct the wind, but you can adjust the sails. I finished that. And now I've started working on this. Keep your face to the sunshine and you cannot see a shadow. And here's what it looks like. As you can see, this is where I'm working at, the square right down here. And it's coming along. And this is a pretty large piece. So that is my cross stitch progress. Let me show you what I'm working on crocheting. So I'm working on this cardigan, this gracie slouchy cardigan right here. So I've got the back panel all done and I finished, well, no, I think it's the right panel and now working on the left panel. So let's see here. This is the right panel. And this is up here where it will attach the shoulders. This is the back panel. And this is up here, like I said, is where it will attach at the shoulders. So if I turn it around, put the yarn in my mouth, yuck. It will attach up here at the shoulder and then the other panel will attach over there and this will be the neck hole. And here is the other panel I'm working on. So I have to finish that panel, two sleeves, and then the buttonhole edging and neck edging and that will be done. So we worked on that, and then what's up last is my diamond painting. I started another one. Now this is just a small one. Just a very inexpensive one. There's the picture of what it should look like, and this is where I am. Now I did get asked, what do I do with my, my diamond paintings? How do I finish them? Do I put them in a frame? Well, I don't put them in a frame, but what I do do is I usually either wrap them around a canvas or some stretcher boards. This is one that hangs here in my little sewing room. And I have just wrapped it around and stapled it together on a canvas, on an artist canvas. And then I hang it up. I can also use stretcher bars and I'll put it around the stretcher bars, which the stretcher bars are basically just the wood pieces that hang it up. Although a lot of my diamond paintings, I mean, I don't have an infinite wall space anymore. After I do them, I just kind of put them in this big art, artist portfolio type thing I have, and they're stacked up in there for now because I do them just because I like them and I don't have an infinite wall space. <laughs> you know, when I first started diamond painting, I kind of went crazy and I bought a lot. So I have a lot to do, but I don't think I've bought a diamond painting in probably at least two years but I might as well do the ones I have, right? <laughs> All right, so that's everything I worked on this week. Any questions, concerns, comments, leave them down below. Let me know. I'd love to talk to you. All right, until next time. Bye.